In this video, we are going to talk about 20 most important SAP administration transactions that every SAP administrator should be aware of. Wherever I can, I will also show you practically how it works using a SAP demo system. If you are interested to learn how to install an SAP demo system on a Docker, then please check out my previous video. I will provide the link in the description. Now let's go through the transactions one by one. The first one on the list is SU01. This particular transaction is more for the security administrators and not for the basis admins. But still it is important to know how it works so that you can administer user accounts if required. This transaction enables you to maintain individual master records. You can use it to create new user master records or make changes to the existing user master records such as assigning new roles and authorization profiles etc. For mass maintenance of users, you can use the transaction SU10. The next one on the list is SM02. You can display pop-up messages to users that are logged into the SAP system using this transaction. For example, say you plan to shut down this demo system at 6 p.m. today and you would like to inform the users whoever logs into this SAP system about that. I can then go to transaction SM02 and write the message as the system will go down at 6 p.m. tonight. Then mention the date from when it must be displayed and when the message should be deleted. Click save and as you can see, I am able to see the pop-up message. Every other user who has logged into the system will be able to see the same pop-up message. The next transaction is SM04. SM04 transaction helps you see who has logged into the SAP system. You can see both who has logged into a specific application server or the system as a whole. We can perform other functions such as logging of a user from the system, activating a trace for a particular user, etc. The next transaction is SMENQ or SM12. This transaction is used to unlock lock entries in an SAP system. Say for example, I am accessing a record of an employee in SU01. The NQ server in the central instance of the SAP system will place a lock of that particular entry in the table. Once I completed editing that record and click save, the NQ server must unlock the entry in the table. But for whatever reason, if the unlocking didn't work, then others can't access the same entry or same record. At this time, you can go to this transaction and unlock the entry or unlock the lock manually. The next transaction is SM13. This transaction is used to display update requests of an SAP system. So whenever you fill some details in an SAP transaction and click save, that save process will update the database with whatever data you typed in that transaction. Sometimes there can be an issue in the update process where the data is not properly getting updated. Using this transaction, you can analyze problems pertaining to the update process, test and debug and delete the update requests. Since this is a demo system, you can't see any update requests in the system at the moment, but if it is a proper production system in an organization, then you will see too many updates happening at any given time. The next transaction is SM21 or ST22. SM21 is used to check system logs. It covers all the system related issues like database connectivity issue, operating system issue, network timeout, etc. Whereas ST22 covers the runtime ABAP dumps. If you are executing an ABAP program in the SAP system and if it throws an error, then you can go to ST22 and check what caused the error. If it is a standard SAP program, then there might be an SAP note available to solve the issue. And if it is a custom program that is causing the error, then the ABAP developer will be able to check what could be the issue. Once again, since this is a demo system, there are no runtime errors at the moment, but you will see a lot in the production system. The next transaction is SM36 and SM37. So SM36 is used to create, alter and delete background jobs. For example, you want to execute a report in the background then you can set it up as a background job to run during a specific day and time. And you can also mention whether it should run in a periodic manner or just one time. Then transaction SM37 is used to monitor the status of the background jobs that you have scheduled to run on the SAP system. There are different statuses associated with the background job such as scheduled, which means the job already has been defined, but the start condition has not yet been defined. Released. That means the job has been fully defined, including a start condition. Ready means the start condition of a released job has been met. The job scheduler has put the job in line to wait for an available background work process. Active means the job is currently running. Active jobs can no longer be modified or deleted. 
finished means all steps that make up this job have been completed successfully and uh, cancelled means the job has been terminated. The next transaction is SM50. SM50 transaction is used to manage and monitor work processes. Using this transaction you can end a work process, debug a program that is taking too long to complete or restart a work process etc. There are different types of work processes available in SAP systems and they are dialog work process. It includes UI requests like uh, whatever you execute in front of an SAP system and RFC requests. Then the second work process is update. This process executes the update requests and saves the data into the database. The next one is NQ work process. This process executes the lock requests. Then batch. This process executes the background jobs and SPU or spool. This process executes the sprint requests. And these are the possible statuses of work processes. They are waiting, which means this uh, the particular process is waiting for requests. Running means the process is executing a request. Stopped means the process is stopped for an individual user. Ended means an error has terminated the process. Shutdown process means terminated because of a shutdown. Standby means the process is only used in special, uh, special situation. The next transaction is SM51. Transaction code SM51 is used to display a list of active application servers that have registered in the SAP message server. So whenever you start an SAP system, all the application servers of that SAP system will register themselves in the message server. And that's how the message server knows how many active application servers are running for a particular SAP system. So this trans using this transaction, you can display a list of all the active application servers that are running in an SAP system. And further, you can manage and display the status, users, and work processes in an application server belonging to the SAP system. The next one is SM58. SM58, uh, using this transaction, you'll be able to check the RFC errors uh, that are occurring in the SAP system. The next one is SMWG. SMWG is a gateway monitor. It is used for analyzing and administering the gateway in the SAP system. SAP NetWeaver Gateway is a technology that provides a simple way to connect devices, environments, and platforms to SAP software based on market standards. Now it can be installed in an SAP system like ECC or s hana or it can be installed as a standalone system. NetWeaver Gateway is usually used to enable the communication between Fury apps and the backend systems as well. SMICM. This transaction is used to monitor the Internet Communication Manager or also known as ICM in short. ICM is part of the NetWeaver application server and it enables the communication between the application server and the outside world with the internet via the protocols such as HTTP, HTTPS and SMTP. The status of the ICM will show either as running, uh, maintenance, not running or available. The next transaction is ST06. This transaction is used to monitor the operating system on which the SAP system is running. You can gather details about things like virtual memory, physical memory, CPU, file system administration, physical disk, and uh, network performances. The next one is ST02, SAP Memory Configuration Monitor. This transaction checks the SAP buffers and SAP memory areas for problems such as swapping. It is a snapshot of the utilization of S SAP shared buffers. The next transaction is ST03N. The ST03N workload monitor is the central access point for analyzing performance problems in the SAP system. ST03N is a revised version of the transaction ST03. Here you can compare the performance values of all instances and compare the performance of particular instances over a period of time. Due to the number of possible analysis views for the data determined in transaction ST03, you can uh, quickly determine the cost of performance problems. You can use the workload monitor to display things such as number of instances configured for your system, number of users working on the different instances, response time distribution, distribution of workload by transaction steps, transactions, packages, etc., transactions with the largest response times and database times, memory usage for each transaction or each user per dialog step, workload cost by RFC broken down by transactions, function modules, destinations, number and volume of spool requests and much more. The next transaction is DBA cockpit. The DBA cockpit transaction code is used to access the DBA cockpit, a central tool for monitoring, controlling, configuring, and administrating your database. Some of the key functions of the DBA cockpits are uh, monitoring, controlling, configuring, and administration. 
The next transaction is RZ10. RZ10 in SAP system is used to manage the system profile parameters. These parameters control various aspects of the system's behavior such as performance, memory usage and security. These parameters are initially populated when the SAP system is installed. Then you can make changes to these parameters using this transaction. Here are some of the key things that you need to know about RZ10 transaction. You can actually use this uh, transaction to view, edit and delete profile parameters for three main profiles. The first one is instance profile, which defines settings for a specific application server instance. The second one is start profile, which is used during the system startup. The third one is the default profile, which serves as a template for instance profiles. You can analyze parameter values and their impact on the system, export and import profile parameters as well. The changes that you make uh, in RZ10 don't immediately affect the system. You need to restart the relevant SAP instance or the whole system for uh, the profile parameters to take effect. The next one is RZ11. RZ11 in SAP serves a purpose similar to RZ10 but uh, with key differences. So you can dynamically change profile parameters for the current running instance of the application server using this transaction. You can view the parameter value across multiple profiles, whether it is instance, default, or start profile. You can access parameter documentation and technical details. And uh, the one thing that you should note is that the changes that you make using transaction RZ11 are temporary. They last only until the application server is restarted. If you want to compare the transaction RZ11 uh, with RZ10, means uh, then you know there's a difference of dynamic versus permanent. RZ11 offers temporary changes, while RZ10 edits are permanent until the next restart or profile import. And uh, RZ11 affects only the current instance, while RZ10 can modify parameters for multiple instances and profiles. And usually RZ11 uh, requires less authorization compared to RZ10. The next transaction is SMLG. Transaction SMLG stands for Configure Logon Groups. It allows you to manage settings for groups of application servers that users can connect to through SAPGUI or RFC calls. The main purpose of this transaction is to create and manage logon groups, uh, configure load balancing, set server preferences, manage user access and monitor performance. The last transaction is RZ20. Transaction RZ20 stands for CCMS Monitoring. It's a central platform for monitoring and analyzing the health and performance of your SAP systems. The main purpose of using this transaction is to display alerts and messages, monitor various components, analyze trends and identify problems, perform root cause analysis, manage alerts and messages. These are some of the most commonly used SAP administration transactions. These transactions are based on the SAP NetWeaver application server and are common across all SAP systems that are based on the SAP NetWeaver platform. If you can master these transactions and understand how and when to use them exactly, then administering an SAP system will be much easier. If you have watched the video this far, please give the video a like and share it with your friends who might also benefit. See you soon in the next video.